This is how Rick Allen, the drummer for Def Leppard, uses electronic drums. What's up? My name is Justin. Welcome to 65 Drums, the place to keep on top of all things e related. Hope you're having an awesome day. I wanted to break down Rick Allen's drum set because, number one, the guy is an utter legend. Number two, his drum set's really famous. And number three, you guys have requested this video quite a bit, so I wanted to make this video. Thank you for the suggestions. That's how this series is kept alive. Keep them coming. And let's jump into the gear right away. Okay, so I've got to start off with the important stuff first. He's right-handed, exclusively. He doesn't have a left arm at all. This is due to a tragic car accident that he was in earlier in his life. Now, when you're only using one arm to drum, you're really limited, so you have to rely a lot on your feet. So what he does is he makes his left foot do a lot of what his left hand would have done in the first place. So he's got a ton of different trigger pedals. I don't know all the brands of the trigger pedals that he's used over the years, but he started off with these prototype pedals, and then at some point he moved on to Shark branded trigger pedals, and now he uses custom made Axis trigger pedals. One of the unique things about this pedal is that there's no spring on the inside of it. With most trigger pedals, you'll see that there's a spring there that basically snaps um, the foot plate back into place after you release your foot. And this guy, uh, Rick stomps on these pedals. That's his playing technique. And the problem for that is there's a potential for a double trigger to happen. You press really hard on the plate and then the spring snaps it back and then possibly the plate will press down a little bit afterwards as an aftershock and that could trigger a second sound. But imagine that you have two bars of a tambourine that's gonna be triggered when you hit this pedal and you accidentally hit it twice because there's a spring there that's you know being a little excited. So you're basically having two loops of a tambourine going for two bars and it just sounds like utter chaos and madness. So what they do instead is they have little wedges, little slices of neoprene foam and that way it rebounds. It's just slower, slightly mushier, but it's, um, it's better for triggering results. At least that's what his drum tech says. Let's talk about the trigger housing for a second. There's this little Teflon nub that hits the trigger housing unit. This is the inside. As you can see, it's a very, very simple setup and uh, this can be replaced. Everything can be repaired at a moment's notice. You'll notice that there's a lot of gaff tape on top of all these pedals. At first, I thought it was because he was, he was using pedals that were from a different company that he wasn't affiliated with, so he has to cover up the logos. But no, the reason why he's got gaff tape there is that there are Dr. Soul inserts taped on top of these pedals. And it's just basically for comfort while he's playing. Everyone knows that this guy plays barefoot. He's famous for that. The reason why he plays barefoot when he's drumming is he used to play with shoes and they would get snagged as he's trying to slide his foot across all these you know, million pedals that he has down here. When you're really relying on your feet for drumming, you gotta make sure that your pedal work is on point. And kind of look at it from his perspective, there's a ton of different pedals here. You have at least three different trigger pedals on his left side, and then you have another backup kick drum trigger pedal on his right side. So you gotta make sure that you know where your foot is at all times. The sounds that he's using aren't set in stone. So for example, on his left side, one pedal will be the kick, the snare, and then the floor tom, in that order. That's his standard go-to setup. And then other times, I've read in magazine articles and stuff that he'll have like closed hi-hats, kick drum, snare, and then tom, or effects snare, snare, tom two, and tom three. To the right of his kick drum, there's also an identical pedal. He doesn't use this one much. It's basically for backup in case something goes wrong with his kick drum mic and he can't use that, that drum anymore. He does assign sounds to it uh, every once in a while, but it's mostly a backup pedal. Right now, Rick Allen actually has three different drum sets, the A rig, the B rig, and the C rig. I keep hearing different descriptions on what they are, but a couple of the drums have this beast rack. This, it looks like it could withstand a nuclear blast. It's like the drum rack to rule all drum racks. And anytime you see one of his drum sets that look like that, it actually goes in a giant box, just as it is. It isn't taken apart, it's literally just put in a giant box and shipped from show to show. And then you have other drum sets like this C-Rig, where it has a more traditional modular rack from Yamaha because he's affiliated with them, he's actually um, sponsored by them. Whenever he plays on that kit, the rack actually gets completely taken apart every day and put into all these road cases. It's basically smaller to travel with. So let's talk about the pads that he's used over the years. Of course, he's used the famous Simmons pads. Every drummer from that era has. Uh, one report says that he was using SDS9 pads, six of them, for 
the kick, the snare, and the toms. I even saw a picture of him using some D drum cymbals at one point, and then later he switched over to Heart Dynamics. Rest in peace. I'm really sad that they're no longer with us. I saw that he was using the Aqua Pads, and then later he transitioned over to the Hammered Chrome Shells. Those looked freaking sweet. Now, like I said, Heart Dynamics is no longer with us, unfortunately, so he's on the Pintech train right now. I saw that he's using Concert Cast Mesh Pads. He's also got two bar triggers from Pintech, too, that he uses mostly for cowbell and kick drum sounds. Now, like I said earlier, he's got three different drum sets. So I've seen on one of his setups that he's using the concert cast mesh pads. And then also I've seen that he's been using these acoustic shells with Pintech trigger elements inside of them. You'll also see that depending on what kit he's playing, the mesh heads are different. Now, of course, on every single song, the different pads play different sounds. Everything is set up ergonomically to fit with his, you know, one armed playing style. So that far right tom is usually a kick drum, and then of course everything changes from kit to kit. This entire drum set has been designed for efficiency, for a guy that's drumming with just one right arm. So everything you see doesn't necessarily trigger the sounds that you might think that they would. Whenever he uses an acoustic snare, he's got a D-Drum Acoustic Pro snare trigger on it, and he, he's got a snare mic on it as well, but that's just a backup in case the trigger breaks. One of the more interesting parts of his drum set is that he's got four sets of hi-hats. The first set on the far left side are the normal ones that you always expect from a drum set, and then he's got three sets of hi-hats right there in the middle of his drum set. And uh, basically they're just different variations of open and closed. He's got three sets of hi-hats that actually have triggers built into them. And his drum tech says that they're actually a pain in the butt to dial in the trigger settings, but he gets the job done. And like I said, he's got those three hi-hats with triggers in them, and uh, basically he triggers loops with them most of the time. So for example, he could trigger a tambourine uh, playing in the background as he does something. In a very old magazine, they explained that he was using his Simmons pads running into a Simmons MTM MIDI interface that ran into an Ikea S900 sampler. The samplers were a combination of his own drums that he recorded and the Simmons SD7 sounds in their library right there. He just sort of mixed and matched them and put them into that sampler rack. Now talking about today, all of his pads and all of his pedals run into a sub snake. The A and B rigs use Whirlwind, and the C rig uses a radial snake. All the pads plug into it, and that snake runs to the rack unit where the drum tech lives. All right, so in this next part, I'm gonna be talking about a bunch of different rack units. I'm not an expert at all this crap. I'm just gonna sort of explain it as the drum tech explained it in one of his YouTube videos, which I'll be linking in the description below. I've linked a bunch of different resources down there, articles and all that stuff. So the C rig that he's using has a Moto 24 IO converter. The A and B rigs use M Audio Delta 1010s. Those converters run to two laptops. One of those laptops is for backup. You can, he can basically switch between them in case one of the laptops fails. Now there's an input switcher and an output switcher. He's got two US Audio AB8s and he's got two radial SWA MK2s. On one of his rigs, they just have a radial rack unit that handles the inputs and the outputs just to basically save space. You'll see near the end of this breakdown how heavy this rack unit is and it's absolutely insane. He also has Grace 902 headphone amplifiers running to PCIe cards mounted in an expansion chassis on the rack that is routed to express card slots. Let's talk about how he powers all this stuff. He's got a Furman P3600 ARG power conditioner, and he's got a universal power input box that basically lets him plug into any power outlet anywhere in the world that he goes to perform, and it basically converts it to 60 hertz, 120 volts. He also has a UPS battery backup system as well. Now this isn't technically part of the rack unit, but it definitely needs to be mentioned. He's got an RJM Mastermind GT pedal board. This is so he can actually switch kits between songs for Rick. And also Rick has an identical one on stage so he can do it himself as if he needs to at a moment's notice. As far as the whole rack goes, this entire thing is absolute beast. It weighs 450 pounds. So uh, man, don't ask me to lift that stuff. And the latency for all this is actually pretty impressive. It's only 2.1 milliseconds, and that's after running through all the different rack units. And those famous glittery headphones that you keep seeing in all of his different videos, those are David Clark headphones. Now you may have noticed something funny about this kid. There's no drum module involved in any of this. And his drum tech, Jeff Diffner, actually explains this in a very interesting way as to why he doesn't want to use a drum module. Talking about the technology of the kit as a whole, he said that it's less voodoo than people think. Really the biggest part is getting the trigger set up right. One of the benefits of doing a software setup as opposed to a pure hardware setup like a drum module 
is that as a tech, I'm allowed to work on things during the show. If we were dealing with a Roland drum brain or a Yamaha drum brain and a trigger went haywire, if it was double triggering or maybe it started dying so I'd have to crank the gain, there's really no way for me to go in and edit any particular trigger while Rick is playing. Typically, when you pull up the settings for a pad, the minute you hit a different pad, the page changes over to the settings for that pad, which with Rick is all of them. You know, Jeff really does have a point here. When you're trying to edit trigger settings inside of most drum modules, the moment you hit a different pad, all the settings that you're working on disappear and it switches over to the page that deals with the trigger settings for the pad that you just hit. So if you're in the middle of a concert, you know, hitting a million pads a second, your, your trigger settings are just gonna fly by like that and you're not gonna have a chance to really lock anything down. Now there are ways around this. So for example, on my Roland TD30, I believe I can press the lock button so it just stays on one trigger. And then I can press these, you know, arrow buttons basically on the bottom where I can switch between different triggers. But it's really, it's nowhere near as easy as basically having the drum software on a laptop in front of you and just literally, you know, poking around and choosing the trigger you wanna edit and then editing the gain and the threshold all there in real time without having this issue at all. Okay, so let's talk about the laptops and software. They use two of them. One is for backup. On the rack unit, you'll see that there's a lot of double everything. That way they can switch over between laptops in, in case something's breaking. But anyway, I saw that one of them, at least the one that I saw, was a Leveno, and I believe it was running Vista, possibly Windows 7. These things have been running for six years, and they're actually thinking about upgrading them. By the time you watch this video, these laptops may not be the current ones. But anyway, the computer software that they're using right now is called D-Trig. So you've got all these inputs from all the pads and all the pedals running to the laptop and all the trigger settings are done within this program right here. And then all the, all the sounds, all the samples are run into this sample software called Battery. Now this is one of the most interesting things that I learned when doing the research. What he hears in his monitors and his wedges and his headphones and stuff, those are different sounds, different samples than what the audience hears. Apparently, according to the drum tech, he just likes certain sounds. It, it's like clearer to play along with. It just makes more sense to them. And then the audience has their, you know, you know, big rock sound that they get to hear. It's just really funny that they're actually listening to a completely different sample than what the audience gets to hear. And that is the breakdown. I need to know before you leave, what's your favorite Def Leppard song? I want to know. Let me know down in the comments below. Hope you guys all have an amazing day and I'll see you in a few.